for safety, firefighting, and elementary first will be offered by the Mauritius Maritime Training Academy. We expect some 500 young people to graduate from these courses every year. Finally, we need to ensure that workers can move to more attractive jobs without worrying about accrued rights. To ensure that pensions and associated benefits are fully portable, we will make the necessary legal amendments in the course of 2020. Mr. Speaker, sir, I spoke earlier about every sector of the economy having its own specificity. The micro and SME sector is one of them. In times of crisis, they are the most vulnerable. Rising competition, they have to be relevant and profitable. Yet when they do succeed, they can make an irreplaceable contribution to the economy. SMEs produce 37% of our GDP. That is some 120 billion rupees worth of output. They give employment and provide a living to 250,000 men and women. And it is there that the culture of entrepreneurship takes root, grows, and democratizes the economy. We know the fast onset of competition from emerging markets. The crisis in Europe and the sluggish global GDP growth can be very testing times for them. And their biggest frustration is facing up to this, in facing up to these challenges is access to finance. A number of actions have been taken in the past to address the issue of, of SME financing. The results are being limited at best. Admittedly, it is a tough issue to crack, but this government will not let up. Mr. Speaker, sir, on SME financing, we will break the mold. Today, we will support them where they are hurting the most by acting on the prohibitively high cost of credit. Interest rates of 14% and even higher, are dangerously stifling the drive of entrepreneurs. They are threatening the growth, profitability, and competitiveness of the SMEs. We need to remedy the situation. Others have tried and failed, and failed, but we shall not falter, and we will prevail. After protracted negotiations, the banking sector has agreed to the release of 3 billion rupees at an affordable interest rate of 3% above the repo rate, that is 8.5%. 8.5%. The main features of the scheme are as follows. New overdrafts and bank loans, as well as renewal, as well as renewal of existing facilities, will be made at the rate of 8.5%. All processing costs and related charges will be waived. Participating banks will collectively make available 3 billion rupees for the next three years, that is one billion rupees a year. The equity fund will provide a guarantee instrument to offer risk cover amounting to 35% of every loan and overdraft. Finally, banks will be allowed to claim the deduction from tax in respect of SME bad debts without, having, without the need to have recourse to the court. With this scheme, we are doing things differently to give maximum support to the SMEs. It is a revolutionary measure that addresses both access to and the cost of finance. More importantly, it does not cover only new operations, but also benefits clients at renewal. In addition, it covers both investment and capital. 
Furthermore, and this is important, no red tape or inordinate, or inordinate delays and no need to interface with government. Mr. Speaker, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir. The banks need to understand that the provision of credit to SMEs at a fair rate is central to government's policy to ensure equal opportunities for all. I would like here to express my gratitude to the Prime Minister, the government, the governor of the Bank of Mauritius, and the commercial banks for their support in achieving this revolutionary measure. New loans, New loans to, SMEs. to SMEs and the DBM will also be capped at the repo rate plus 3%, percent, that is 8.5%. To further support the SMEs, as well as other borrowers, government is abolishing the inscription fee levyable on registered loans. Furthermore, I am removing registration duty, which ranges from 1,000 to 10,000 rupees on loans not exceeding 1 million rupees. As a result, charges will be reduced to cover only, uh, to, to cover only processing costs of 1,000 rupees. These two last measures, Mr. Speaker, sir, will cost government around 70 million rupees. Mr. Speaker, sir, lack of industrial space is another major hindrance to the development of the SME sector. It is also an environmental hazard as many micro-entrepreneurs use residential and other non-industrial space for their operations. To remedy this situation, government is constructing an additional 175 units in industrial estates at five sites. They will be available to a wide array of SMEs, including mechanics, carpenters, metal workers, manufacturers, and furniture makers. The size of the units will be at least 500 square feet. Mr. Speaker, sir, I am pleased to announce that government will give a discount of 50% on the rental in the first three years. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, we want to give SMEs a fair chance to work on government contracts. We are amending the law to provide for at least two SMEs in the short list of restricted bidding for procurement of up to 5 million rupees. For low value procurement of up to 500,000 rupees per contract subject to restricted bidding bids, the Public Procurement Office will issue a directive to include at least one SME in the short list. The bidding documents will be simplified to ensure SMEs, to encourage SMEs to submit bids. Mr. Speaker, sir, I have also given some deep thought on how to support entrepreneurship generally. This is vital to democratization. Often, the lack of income for the entrepreneur in the first year of operation is the most serious inhibition to starting a business. To encourage those that deserve help, we are granting them up to 20,000 rupees a month to cover their living expenses. They must have an innovative proposal approved by the Mauritius Business Growth Scheme. They will be integrated into the assistance provided by MBGS for business services and repaid on the same terms. Mr. Speaker, sir, Responsibility of government is clear. 
We must provide leadership in investment and job creation. It is a responsibility we will not shirk. We have therefore designed a resilience plan for the next three years, covering enterprises of all sizes, but with a special focus on SMEs, infrastructure development, and job creation. We do not want to be called short if the crisis intensifies. The resilience plan <coughs> is made up of four strategies. Mr. Speaker, sir, strategy one is to support enterprises at the microeconomic level. To this end, I'm committing 7.3 billion rupees to a national resilience fund. This is more than double the amount available to the business growth fund. Let me be absolutely clear on how the NEF and RF will be used. It is a contingency fund. It will be used to strengthen the resilience of the economy. It ma if matters get worse, it will be used as a rainy day fund to show up public financing. Money that is not needed will not be spent. And enterprises that will be supported will have to show concrete efforts at building permanent resilience. I'm therefore pleased to announce that resources from the NRF will be used to broaden the reach of the Leasing for Equipment Modernization Schemes, LEMS, and to improve them. We are maintaining the LEMS because they are successful to support enterprises. To this day, more than 300 enterprises have benefited, 56% of which are SMEs. I'm therefore extending all facilities under the LEMS to December 2012. And Mr. Speaker, sir, because of its successful record, I'm also extending LEMS to all industries, including traders, as long as their turnover does not exceed 50 million rupees. 